Hello and welcome to the program Church in Focus, the program that's designed to highlight what God is doing in his kingdom through his people. Yemi Balogun is my name, and you know what? Before we go ahead, get yourself a pen and a paper. You will surely need it. Because in the studio here with me is a dangerous woman. The devil hates her, and so she hates the devil as well. But I'm telling you, God has used her and her husband to do exploits to the glory of his name. And to be frank with you, we're really, really blessed, or more than blessed, to have her here in the studio with us. She is by the name. How do I describe her? Too much. <laughs> Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa of a ministry known as Church of God Mission International. Welcome to the program. Ma. My pleasure. I will call you Mommy Idahosa ah. because back home, someone like yourself who is a general in the kingdom, we call you Mommy. Anyway, because you are old enough to be our mother, you're <laughs> there to look after us because your husband was a great man. And God used him mightily. He did exploit to the glory of God's name. But before we talk about him, let's talk about you first. How did you, how did you come to know the Lord? What's, what's your conversion experience like? Uh, thank you very, very much for inviting me. I'm indeed very, very grateful for what God is using you to do to tell the vision of other ministry to the world. Now, coming, into, coming to the, the question you asked, my conversion. My conversion is really miraculous. I was in the college, and I was, it was in the last year. I came home on vacation. And uh, before I came home, we, I, have known, I have known my husband for years. We call him pastor because he's always sharing tracts on the street and preaching the gospel and asking people, invited people to church. He invited me, I never went because uh, I said, I'm a born and a dying Anglican. My father is a foundation member and so all the children, we are founders or foundation members of Anglican. But he said no, not to worry, but he was able to get one of my little cousins. And so every Sunday he comes, takes my cousin to church and, um, and that's it. So this particular day, it was about 4 o'clock, and uh, behold, he came into the house, and he said, oh, uh, I'm looking for where somebody died. I said, well, we have a death in the morning. The, the father has gone to the secretariat to get a certificate for us to bury this child. At that time, it, it was, she was about three years old. As, as a matter of fact, she convulsed and died at about 9 o'clock. At this time, 4 o'clock, the body was already changing. We were all waiting for the father to come with the certificate that we can take the child to, 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 to bury. And now this elegant young man came in and he said, How I have been looking for where somebody that said, hey, 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 hey. No, 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 this is no joke. Every day is no Christmas. We have a death here. He said, I have been waiting. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm looking for. I want to raise the dead. I say, bro, bro, you are going too far. He said, no, Margaret, I am very serious. I know when he wants something, he wants it. I said, okay, no problem. So I took him to where the child was, uh, where we laid the child. And so I stood by the door to see how this young man is going to perform the miracle to wake this child. And I was very, very curious. And I stood. And he went in. He prayed the first time. He prayed the second time. He prayed the third time. He now came and said, what is the name of the child? I said, do you, need, do you, know the, do, do, do you need the name of the child? He said, yes, yeah, because in the Bible, Jesus asked the woman that the child died, what is the name? And, and the woman told uh, him, Tali Takumi. So he thought that was the name of that child. Oh, I said, okay, the name of this child is called Inuata. So he went in and prayed and called this child's name. And all of a sudden I heard a sneeze from this dead child from 9 a.m. You know what? I took to my heels. 
and I ran out and I said, oh no, I can't stand this. Mm. And behold, he brought that child. They walked out of the room together. And it blew my mind. So after it all, he said, give the child the, the, uh, uh, some food to eat. We gave the child the food to eat. After it all, I said, come. What is that thing that made you wake somebody from death? He said, well, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. My pastor preached and said, you can raise the dead. And so I asked him, have you done it? He said, no, but can I do it? He said, yes. And that was it. And that was what got me into the Lord. And he preached a simple message. Tears was rolling down my eyes. And guess what? Today, that child that uh, he, he rose from the dead has eight children. Wow. Still alive and well. So that was what got me into the ministry, into the gospel. You know, wow. and I told my dad, say, Dad, you've been in Anglican for years. I'm sorry if, for measuring the name. You've been in this particular church for years and nothing has happened. Look at. And that was it. And I gave my life to Christ. My mom gave her life to Christ. The mother of the child gave his life to, her life to Christ. And that was how we found the Lord. Wow. And since then, it's, it's been miracles upon miracles upon miracles. Wow. This is serious. Because the life of your husband was wonderful. I read a lot about him. I've, I heard a lot. That's Archbishop Benson Idahosa. Mm. And I remember when he, but let me first of all say that you're looking good. Oh, thank you. You look well, and I thank God for your life. Thank you. That you have picked up and you are running. Thank you. You know, rather than just sitting back and saying, well, he's gone. But we thank God he's going to be with the Lord. I have and, to. Hmm. I have to. Amen. I have to. I have to make a choice. It's my choice. You know, I have seen a lot of women that have lost their husband. They become shadow of themselves. That's it's right. their choice. I tell widows, I say, listen, my dear, if your husband is gone, that does not mean the end of life. There is still life ahead of you. I mean, God cannot give you a body that you cannot bear. He knew exactly that you can bear it. That was why he took his own home. And life begins. Life right. goes on. So your husband, if, he's, if he was a Christian, is not behind you, it's in your future. And I tell women, and this gives them a great encouragement. And mm -hmm. I encourage myself, just as David said, I, and I encourage myself to encourage others. You know, when things happen to children of God, and we ask why, 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 why? We ask why because we have passed through it from the past but you know god answers us in the future Fantastic. i tell them i say listen my dear life goes on god has made me to pass through it so that i can be able to stand to encourage you that life goes on take care of yourself take care of your children today i'm 64 by the grace of god wow. people look at me and say ah you you, you don't look it i say yes yeah, it is the oil of the holy ghost that rejuvenates me every day because I look unto God. I hold no grudge. You know, when, when the Archbishop passed, a lot of things will have happened. But I said, God, you have tied my hands now behind. And therefore, I hold no grudge. Release me and release them. And I work with everybody. I tell them, listen, I'm the mother of the good, the mother of the bad, the mother of the ugly. I don't have any one of you for sacrifice. Everybody, come on, let's go. There is big job for us to do that. This great man left for us. Amen. So, by his grace, we are. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I thank God for your life. I, I just love your attitude. I'll, I love the way you look. I, you know, you look well for Thank 63. You. You're just wonderful. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Wow, because your husband was a great man. He wrote a book, Fire in My Bones. I read the book. I was fired up. Amen. Then Amen. the last message he preached, the benefits of death. Oh, yes. I have never heard any man of God. Me too. Preach about death that way ever. Me too. Me too. And I haven't seen anything close to it. Because when you listen to the message, you want to die. 
you, 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 it's not that you want to die. You, you're not afraid of death anymore. Not afraid of death. You yes. have some boldness. Yes. You have some confidence to know, you know, knowing that yes, everything is is, in, is under control. And I was really blessed. So can you just tell us in a nutshell what happened? He's passing away because, according to information I heard, mm. it was like he himself sensed something was about to happen, and he was putting some things in order. He was teaching, and and I heard, I, I was speaking to Archbishop Duncan Williams. He said, you know what? He said, the, man, the gentleman, he said, you were asking him. The man said, you know, everything that God told him to do, he has done. Yes. And you were asking him, what about this other project? What about that other project? And he said, you go and finish it. And that was, that's kind of prophetic. Yes. Tell us what happened. Um, in February of 1998, he completed 40 years in the ministry. And so everybody brought cards, we brought greetings, we brought blessings to him. And uh, he just sat and was just looking at us. And he told everybody that, we, everybody that was present at that particular meeting that day and said, you know, I no longer live for, pros for prosperity now. I now live for posterity. I mean, what God has given me, I have done. I say, eh, eh, honey, no, 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 no. Please don't talk in parables. We don't want you to go now. You know, we had always taken him for granted. Oh, that he will be there. He will be there for us for, long, for, for a long time. But this time, from that February, he started talking in parables about his going, that his time has come. And... We, we went into prayer and fasting. We said, no, God, we don't want him to leave. But, you know, he would just say it in a humorous uh, attitude, and we all would laugh. But he was very serious, you know? This was it. We went, we went to America for a big conference. And in that big conference, he talked about heaven. He talked about the great chair that God is sitting and all that. And when we finished, he said, honey, I want you to go and see the children. But before we came from, I said, honey, I am not going to allow you to leave me in America. I am coming home with you. He said, no, I want you to go and see the children. This is the beginning of the year. We haven't seen them since the beginning of the year. So I, I said, okay. Because when he talks about the children, that messed my heart. I said, okay, I will go. And I went. You know, he left on the 8th. And on the, on, the, on the 10th, he talked to me and said, honey, I've arrived, blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, praise God. You know, we, 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 we talk as lovers, you know, when we are away. And uh, on that particular day, on the 12th, he called me before he went to morning prayer. We prayed together. And uh, he, 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 he prayed the prophetic prayer. I mean, I couldn't say amen. Mm. I was kind of scared. The words that he was using and all that. And I said, okay, honey, when you come back from money prayer, give me a call. He said, okay. When he came back from money prayer, he gave me, he gave me a call. I said, honey, please help me with the women's uh, uh, school of prayer for the women. He went there, he anointed them, and he told them, Everybody, every woman say now, it is my turn. And you know women, we say, oh, it's, it's our turn. And he called me and said, Margaret, I told the women to repeat after me. It is now my turn. You say it too. Oh, I say, okay, honey, it's, my, it's now my turn. It's now my turn. It's now. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? You know, dummy me, I didn't even know. Even though he has been saying it, you know. I, uh, before we left home, he said, uh, I looked at his eyes. His eyes used to be like that of ego, white, but this time it was kind of red. And I said, oh, honey, you are really tired. You need to go for a vacation. He said, oh, honey, don't worry. In March, I'm going on a vacation. There will be no telephone call. There will be no visitors coming in. I said, oh, praise the Lord. At last. I'm able to convince you to go for a holiday. Little did I know that he was living in March. So that particular day, we called, he went to the women, he told the women all that, and I repeated the same thing. 30 minutes after that, 
I got another phone call. And one of my sister in the Lord, T.L. Osborne's daughter, called and said, Margaret, Papa is gone. I said, oh, all right. I will be there with you. I was thinking that it was her father. I said, okay, the next available flight, I will be there with you because our families are like this. And he said, Margaret, I'm not talking of talking about TL, I'm talking about Papa Idaosa. I said, what? I just spoke to him. And that was it. And that was it. I had to pack my things and come home. When I got home, I met uh, doc, uh, Dr. Petri and Jenny Gaff from Robos University. And I found out, I said, what happened? You tell me. You will tell me exactly what happened. And he said, uh, they were on the table eating, and there's this juice from Nigeria called Pure Heaven. And so, as his custom was, he got up, put the napkin around himself, and was sharing this Pure Heaven in their cups and say, look, let us all drink together because I will not drink again with you until we get to the uh, uh, until we get to heaven or at Jesus' feet. And uh, they thought that uh, it's one of uh, his jokes. And that was it. And they finished the food and he took Dr. Petri and Jenica to the first lobby. He brought out the the plan of the university, then it was not approved, but we are calling it university. You know, it's a man that sees beyond, beyond his age group. You know, he sees further than them. As, as a matter of fact, somebody told me that he lived 150 years with what he did and with what uh, he saw. So we took it, it, we took, uh, he took them to the first lobby and he told them, he said, Jenica, you are a medical personnel. I want you to furnish this university with medical books. Uh, Dr. Petri, you are an educationist. I want you to furnish the library. And they said, okay. And then he raised his hand up and was saying, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So they thought that it was time for prayers. And so they said, they also raised their hand. But after a while, there was nothing coming from his end. So Dr. Petri said, he opened one eye, and he saw him like this. And that was it. That was how he left. Wow. That is serious. That was how he left us. Wow. What a way to go. <sighs> what a way to go. That was it. God bless you, madam. God bless you. Amen. And I know God has been looking after you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He makes a better husband and he makes a better father. Amen. That's God himself. Amen. Oh, yes. And now you took over as the presiding bishop of the Church of God Mission International. How, ha how have you been able to run things since he left? Mm. Uh, well, uh, this is, this is a, a deep question, but I'm going to answer it as much as I know, as much as God will give me the grace. You know, when he passed on, I was put in place. And uh, a lot of people didn't like it, and some applauded. But I didn't mind. You know, I was mourning and grieving. And now another responsibility was placed on me. But I, I wasn't actually looking at the ministry. I said, we will do that. As soon as the funeral service is over and the Thanksgiving service is over, what I will do, I have four biological children. They were all living outside Nigeria. And I said, okay, I know what to do. I will stay with my son for three months. By the time he's tired of me, the next one will be wanting me. So I will go around them like that, and I will visit to home. That was what was in my mind. But when God put me in this position, I was crying, and I said, God, you don't understand. You don't, you don't know where I am. I live in a man's world, quote, unquote. And God said, oh, I didn't know. I thought I made you in my, in my image. And I said, yes, I know, but on the physical, you know, on the physical, look at me. And God said, if I make the appointment, 
I will release the ability to perform. And I said, okay, God, it's a deal. Let's go. And since then, I have been on. Some left us, but some came in. Oh, I'm so happy. Those that left, they left on their own. But those that came in, now I have young professionals, intelligent, educated in the ministry. And I, as I have always told them, I say, listen, people, you are zealous. You are educated. You have what it takes. You have the fire in your bones. The future of Church of God mission is not in me. The future of Church of God mission is in you all. And if you fail, it's your lot. But I'm going to stay here to watch you function and excel. And do you know, we have young, young generation churches. We have one, Church Plus. We have another one, Church Redefined. We have another one, uh, Church Unusual. A lot of them are just coming in. They are young professionals. I don't struggle. I don't struggle anymore. You know, it was when I started, I didn't know what to do, but God helped me out. But thanks be unto God for good people that God gave me. We are a team. A team of my generation, a team of the next generation, and a team of the, the other generation. Amen. We all come together. We stand, we say, yes, Abraham said, I am the lad. We will go up. So I and the next generation and the next generation we will mix together and do the kingdom business. Amen. And this is what we are doing. And we are making impact. We are making impact in my generation. We are making impact in the next generation. We are making impact in the next to the next generation. They reach their world. We reach our world. They reach their world. They reach the, the, the younger one. They reach their world. And it's so knitted together and it blends together and it's so beautiful. Amen. So beautiful. God bless so you. So God has been helping us in the ministry. You know, God is a smart God. He when is. he wants to do something new, something fresh. Oh, yes. He will make a move that would actually shake a few things around and make the sure things go in his own direction. I thank God for your life. God bless you. But you know what? Take down the details on the screen. Call the numbers you have to get through to the headquarters of this ministry. There are branches of the ministry very close to you, no matter where you are, really. Because I've got a list of the branches here. There's a branch in Peckham, Peckham Settlement in, in London here. There's a branch in Sheffield, if you're watching. There's a branch in Manchester, Birmingham. Turin in Italy. So if you, if you live in Italy, a lot of you guys who need help in Italy, call the number. And also in Greece, Athens in Greece, Madrid in Spain, and also Texas in the United States of America, Japan, <laughs> Malaysia. So if you have friends or relatives in any of those areas, call them to report in this ministry because it's not an ordinary ministry. It is a dangerous ministry. The devil was angry with the ministry and is still angry with the ministry, but we don't care. <laughs> God Amen. Bless you. Amen. 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 You know what? Be before we, because time is flying, but I'm going to have to get together with you. We have to do it again. Okay. I, I know there's a lot more inside of you to oh, discharge. Ye oh, yes. So what I want you to do is look at that <clears throat> camera over there. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart, from where you are coming from, what God has been doing in your life, just bless somebody. Okay, let me, can I read the word? Sure, you can. Okay, all right. Uh, the word I have for you, viewer out there, is from Psalm 102, verse 13. It says here, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the time is now. You know how I read it? I read it this way. Thou shalt arise, O God, and have mercy upon Margaret Idahosa. For the time to favor Margaret Idahosa, yea, the time is here. And I want to encourage you. Are you feeling down spiritually? Are you weighed down by the cares and circumstances around you? I have good news for you. And that is, this is your set time. 
Your set time of miracles, your set time of breakthrough, your set time of your dream coming out, co coming to pass. This is your set time, your set time of healing. Are you sick there? I want to let you know. Oh, this is what we do best because healing is the children's bread. I want to let you know that God is on your side. By his stripes, you are healed. And I have this to tell you. Be encouraged today that this is your set time. Hey, you that is not married, it's your set time. Begin to rejoice. You that have no children yet, this is your set time. I want you to know, this when God sets a time, no man can change it. If I set a time, I can change it if I don't like you anymore. But when God sets a time, he never, never changes. That is why he is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He will be the same tomorrow. Oh, aren't you glad that you are attached to this God? I want you to know that this is your set time. And I'm going to pray for you that the set time that God has appointed for you, for your dream, for your healing, for your blessing, for everything that you need from God, this is the set time. If you believe it, you will become it. Because the word of God said in John, ah, as many as believe and received, to them gave he power. Power to do what? Power to become. In other words, God will give you power to become what you believe. Believe the word of God today. Believe it today. Believe it. And you shall become what you believe. This is your set time. Amen. 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 God bless you, man. God bless you, mommy. <laughs> you know, talking about your, your life and the life of your husband, I see that over the years you had great impact upon lives across the whole world. And I was in Ghana for a while, and I discovered the majority of the ministers I met in Ghana were actually trained by you. They were yes. trained in your university. Yes. Can you tell us about how you managed to look after all those guys? You know, we, we, we went there to, have, to hold a city, a city crusade. And after the city crusade, it was the time that... Uh, 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 they were really in bad shape, you know? And my husband said, listen, it is only the word of God that can change a nation, nothing else. When, the man, when, when one is changed from the inside, according to what the, the word of God says, they that know their God, they shall be strong first. When you are strong on the inside, then you can do exploits. Now you are, you, you are weak physically, and you are weak on the inside. Listen, we want to give you scholarship, come to Bini for just one year. And we will put what you have seen now in you. You will come back here and do the same. And that that was where Dr. William came. came. And when he came, I tell he saw, because we took him to crusades, and he saw what God can do in a man's life, and he took it. And out of the spirit of the archbishop, God gave him some. And so today, he is the archbishop of Ghana. Amen. I mean, we have others there. This is, we have trained by the grace of God over 1,000 Ghanaians free of charge. Just come, sit in the class, be taught, let the, let, let the anointing fall on you from God on high through us. By the laying on of hands, we set you back, go and do what you have seen. And yeah. everywhere in, in, in Malawi, in Kenya, in um, Uganda, name it. Wow. They are all there. We have all our seats there. But one thing we are glad they are doing what they know how to do best. Amen. And God is with them. God is signaturing himself in their lives and in their ministry. And that gives us joy. Amen. And that is how we, 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 and we are still training. Anywhere I go in the world, I see people that are being trained from the Bible school in Benin. And I, I, I bless God for the life that Bishop Benson in Dahosa lived. I call him a living legend. Amen. You know, I, Archbishop Duncan Williams was sharing something with me some years back. He said on an occasion he went to Benin to visit your husband. And on his way back, your husband called him and said he, he should kneel down and he wants to pray for him. 
He said, Archbishop Benson in Dahosa laid hands on him. He said he's never experienced anything like that ever in his life. He said the moment the man of God started praying, he said his hair was sizzling like it was burning. <laughs> he said he had to take the Archbishop's hand and remove it because it was too hot. He was burning. He said that, that's how serious the anointing was upon the life of this man. So when I read this book, Fire in My Bones, I understood what the Archbishop Duncan Williams was talking about. But then you have been with him all these years. Can you share with us one or two testimonies to the glory of God? Some testimonies that shook you. Some testimonies that put the fear of God, even in you yourself, apart from you talking about the raising of the dead earlier on. Uh, let me just give you one. And that one is he, he left home in 71 to Christ for the nations. And he came back in 72. When he came back, right at the airport, people that went to work on him, I mean, he started praying for them, laying her, and they were all being slayed in the spirit. I said, me, I'm not going to touch him. So I we went home. And when we got home, I said, honey, I want that thing that happened at the airport, I want it to happen to me. He laid his hand on me. For three days, I was speaking in tongues. He would say, honey, give me water. I will bring out water. I'm speaking in tongue. Give me that tie. I'm bringing the tie. I'm speaking in tongue. I, I say, honey, just lay your hand on me again and let me become myself. <laughs> and he laid his hand before I was able to stop speaking it. It was then the fire of God got into me. And since then, I'm telling you, I'm not boasting. To God be the glory. These hands have been blessed. When I lay it on people, I mean, the wounds that, are, uh, uh, that was once barren, they get opened. When I lay it on sick people, when I just open my mouth to speak, I mean, it goes. I mean, God goes with it, you know, because he, he said in his word that, you know, I watch over my word perform. to perform it. In other words, he runs. Once the word is spoken, he runs after it to perform it. It's not me. It is him. It's not about me. It is about him that have sent me. And that is where I stand and I give glory to him every day. Amen. God bless you. You know, as you were talking, I just, you know, like, uh, there's a lot of things happening because I know as before you leave this studio, you're going to have to discharge some of the anointing because I know as you're here, you're carrying what I call raw anointing. And that raw anointing has to be discharged because this station needs the backing of God to the hilt because the enemy is not happy. And we know that. And we're not worried. But when people like yourself come here, we get you to decree something that will dismantle the kingdom of darkness and will give us the boldness of God to push this gospel forward. I will. So you pray in a minute. But before then also... I remember reading a material by a Nigerian guy who was involved in the occult, negative occult, called the occult grandmaster. Yes. He met your husband and he said, even the devil said he tried to kill your husband, but it was not possible. And he was the greatest problem for him, the devil. You, 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 you knew this guy. Yes. Can you just, in a nutshell, tell us what it's what is all about? Well, I don't know what it's all about, but I know what God is all about. God is all about his kingdom and his children, especially those that he has anointed with his anointing, with his fresh revelation of the word, doing and, uh, 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 and transferring the kingdom of, of God into the heart of men and women. You know, I got to know this man. I, I, I don't know him uh, as such, but I've heard about him. I've seen him in places and with all his people. But I, I never took, care, took, took cognizance of him. But, you know, he wrote a book. Uh, he, has, he has tried and tried to kill the archbishop. He couldn't. But you know, in his book he wrote, he said, I tried to read the Archbishop, but the wife was on the way. But the wife was on the way. The wife is as powerful as that man. But the wife would not let me reach him. And I said, of course, yes. I am there as a helpmate. I am there to help him to, with, 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 with what God has called him to do. And so I stand 
to watch him. I stand to, to, to look after him. I stand spiritually and physically. I stand there to, 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 to watch out, to, to cover his back. And, and, and this was what uh, he, he, he wrote. And I read it. I said, well, that is yours. Amen. But I believe in God. We have no talisman. We have no other God. This is the only God that we know. And we know greater is he who lives, who energizes us than he that is in the world. And this is what we are all about. We are all about the kingdom of God and snatching the, ki the, the, the children of the devil from him and putting them in the kingdom of God and investing in them. And that brings me to our, 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 our vision. Our vision now is building men and women into leadership with a global passion deeply rooted in Christ or deeply rooted in the truth. And that is what we are doing. Wherever we go, we build leaders. We build leaders. We invest in them. We transfer the anointing of God, we, which, is, which is from him, into their lives and set them out to go and do likewise. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, I was reading out a list of uh, the branches of the church across the whole world. Mm -hmm. You know, what is God doing in the Church of God mission internationally, in the diaspora? What is he doing? You know, like, like, as, I, like as I said, that we have a vision. And this vision is burning on the inside of us. And this vision is to build men and women into leadership in everywhere, all nations, wherever that we find ourselves. And so this is what we are doing. In every nation that we are invited in, we, 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 we do what we know how to do, preach the gospel, cast out devils, heal the sick, and then if there is no church there, we plant a church. So this is what we, we are doing. We are working according to the vision that God has given unto us. And since the Archbishop left, God has blessed the ministry. You know, people thought, well, uh, the Archbishop left them there. I'm, I'm going to see what this woman, this woman will do to accept that. But you know what God said? God said, Margaret, the latter house shall be greater than the former. That kind of scared me on the inside and I said, oh God, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't understand. But you know, as time begins to unfold, I begin to see that what God is saying is becoming a reality. The Archbishop left us in March next year will be 10 years. He left, us so with, long. he left us with one faith medical place, and that is one hospital. Today we have three hospitals functioning. One in Abuja, one in Bini, one in Uyu. And we just bought a 28-bed in uh, Ewegai, not too far from Bini, just to serve the people. We give them water. We give them borehole water, I mean, for, for free of charge. We give them electricity just to lighten up everywhere that they are. That is what God has called us to do. And in, in this, God is blessing the ministry. Mm -hmm. He left us with uh, 89 schools. Today, we have 110 schools from the kindergarten to the senior high. Before he left, the university was not approved. But today, the university is fully accredited by the federal government, approved. And we have over 2,500 in the school. We just started in 2003, you know. But God is doing it. We now have, we, the Bible school he left with us was just one. Today we have six in different states in Nigeria. We are planning to have one here in, 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 in London by the grace of God. We now have what we call leadership institute. God cannot give us a vision to go and begin to train men and women into leadership without giving us a base. And so God gave us a base. And this base is working mightily. Men and women that are burnt out in the field, they come in, they are refreshed, and they are, <coughs> they are sent back. 
you know, like the widows, the less privileged, the orphans. I mean, I'm training children in the school now that I don't know their parents from Adam, but because they have brain, I just give them scholarship. We have a university. I have over 15 students. I don't know them, but they are very, very articulate and smart. I say, okay, that which I didn't have when I was growing, I want you all to have it. The same thing with primary school. Same thing in orphanage. I'm sponsoring some orphanages at home. I don't care, but God is helping me to do it. You know, when God gives it to you, you become a pipeline. And when you flow out, God keeps pouring into mm. you. That is what he is doing. Wow. And I, I mean, this is what we are doing in the ministry. And I want to give all the praise and all the glory to the almighty God, my husband. Okokbo, that's what my mother calls him. Right. He's been a help to me and a help in the ministry. Plus the team that we have. We have bishops yeah. inside the country and outside the country. In Canada, in America, we have bishops everywhere. We are working as a team. Amen. Because there's nothing that a team cannot do. Uh, Mas, uh, not Mas Morona, uh, John Maxwell said, when every team member is working accordingly, it makes everybody a winner, an achiever. And uh, we are blessed. Amen. Amen. Because God has given us a team, and every member of the team is playing his or her part, and it makes us achievers. Amen. God bless you, madam. I'm so, so impressed and blessed. Amen. Because even the team you have here in the UK, a lot of those guys who came with you today, they're they busy are young men running around and <laughs> trying to make sure everything works perfectly, totally sold out. And I really thank God for their lives. And that's why I want to encourage you. Take the details on the screen. And there's a church of God mission near you. There's one in Peckham. There's one in Sheffield, Manchester, Birmingham, Turin in Italy. Athens in Greece, Madrid in Spain, Texas in the U.S. of A, Japan, Malaysia. Make sure you call the number, any of the numbers on the screen, and they'll tell you the nearest one to you how to get there, where it is. Listen, if you want fire in your bones, report there with what they call express alacrity. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> My, oh, I, I, I'm really, really enjoying you. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm, what I'm hearing, really. And you know. You, you and your husband, you have mentored a lot of people. How important is mentoring? Especially, there are a lot of young pastors here in this nation. Some of them don't even have mentors. They're just there like a loose cannon. How important is mentoring in this day and age? My husband said, success without a successor is failure in disguise. When you are succeeding and you are not transferring that which you know upon the people that we carry on when you are no longer in the scene you are a failure so that is how important it is that is why i told our people i said listen the future of cgm church of god mission is not in me but it is in the next generation and the next generation before they leave they have to train the other generation according to what timothy told Paul, a poor Paul told Timothy, you know, transfer that which you have heard, that which you have known, that which you, 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 you have seen, transfer it to them, so that they can in return transfer it to the next generation. So it is very, very important. It is very, very, I mean, I look at pastors today, who, who is your mentor, who is your father, who, 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 who speaks into your life? They say, oh, God speaks into my life. I say, yes, <laughs> God does, but who on earth speaks to your life? You need someone. I need somebody to speak into my life. I have a father. I have a mother that speaks into my life. And what about you? Because you won't go far if you are the Lord of your ministry. Nobody comes to you. Nobody speaks to you. Nobody tells you you are wrong or you are doing it right. You won't go far. Wow. And that is how important it is 
for you to have a mentor or the importance of importance of mentoring in the ministry it is very very important it is very very vital it it helps to correct it helps to check balance it it helps to to to, to push forward you know Amen. to encourage to motivate to inspire it helps but if you don't have that you won't go f you won't go you won't go much amen god bless you Tell me, you've traveled all over the world. You've been to Malaysia, you've been to Japan, you've been everywhere. What is God doing in all those nations? And tell me, which one is your favorite nation? Uh, and the, why? The next one. <laughs> the next one. The next one will be the best. <laughs> the one that we've gone, yes, it's past, it's over. You know, we glory in it, but we take the experience. You know, my husband will always say, your past is your teacher. Your present is your opportunity. And tomorrow will be your friend if you make use of opportunity today. Wow. You know? And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm so glad that the next one is going to be the best. And the next one is China. It, it's the uh, Philippines. Okay. And that is where we are going. We went to Japan. It was fantastic. We went to Malaysia. It was good. It was great. Everywhere we go, I mean, it's been great. But I believe that the next one will be greatest. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. So do you accept invitations from ministers? Because there are people watching now in uh, Italy, in Belgium, in Holland. Do you go minister in places? If oh, yes, I do. I do. If, if, if they call my office, and you know, when the Archbishop was here, di this was one making him, made him different from any other ministry, for him, from, from any other minister, because he takes care of the little ministry, that is not even his own. He builds them, he pours into their life, both small and big and old. I mean, and that is, God has given us a fatherly figure. So I, 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 I go to different ministries that are not ours. When they invite me, I look into my schedule. If uh, it is convenient for me, I, I'll tell my secretary, call them back, let them let them uh, 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 tell us what they want and what they are doing. As a matter of fact, I just came from Zaragoza in, my, in, uh, in uh, Spain. I, I've, I've never met them before, but they wrote. And I, I, and I said, I prayed about it. And, and I, was conf I was convinced in my spirit. And I, and I went. And I went there, blessed the people. Blessed them. And I just flew from there into uh, London. And I will be going home shortly. Amen. Amen. I you know, I, I know you've, you've shared one or two testimonies about yourself and your husband. I still want, I want to hear something from you. Some of these things spectacular because Archbishop Idahosla's life was not an ordinary one. We've heard a lot. God doing awesome things. I want to share with us at least one spectacular thing that God did that shook you, even you yourself? Uh, you know, let me, let, let me share this with you. You know, when the Archbishop left, I did everything that I knew how to do. But crusade was my fear. Because I've never done crusade before. You know, I always go there, carry his Bible, and stand before him. I say, oh yeah, that's right. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Th that was all. But everywhere I go, I'm driving, I hear crusade. I'm sleeping, I hear crusade. I'm in the office, I'm hearing crusade, crusade, crusade. And guess what? I tried it. And when I tried it, it worked. The first crusade I ever had was in uh, Dekina in Kogi State. And I went there, and people came. And I preach a simple message, and I just stretch my hand and I say, God, do what you know how to do best. Heal the sick, because healing is the children's bread. Heal them. Lift those that are downtrodden. Re-energize or re-establish or reaffirm whom you are in the lives of men and women. Save souls. And guess what? God did it. One man was sleeping in his house. And I was asking them to give us a land 
to build a church, a school, and a small clinic. Because those are the three areas that my husband taught us how to do. Take care of the body, take care of the soul, and take care of their mind. Because anybody whose mind is developed in education can stand up with his head raised up high anywhere, anytime, any day. So I was, uh, I was just saying, yes, we are looking for a land. Give us a land, and then uh, we will um, uh, build, build, the, build uh, the school and a church. One man of the other religion. You know whom I'm talking about. He was, on his, he was in his bed sleeping around 10 in the night. And he said, somebody woke him up and said, hey, they are, they are asking for a land. You have land. They are asking for a land. And he said, who are you? I don't know them. I don't know where they are. Say, follow the microphone voice. This man was in his pajamas. He was running. Came to the pulpit. Just looked at me and said, I don't believe what you are doing, but I have a land. Here you are. This is the land. I said, oh, thank you. We can manage that. And off he took, he took off and left. I was looking for him to pray for him, but he was gone. But I was happy. God. I mean, I'm preaching in a place far away. God has to wake somebody up to say, go and give them a land. They need a land, and you have a land. That is, that is one of the outstanding miracles that, that blew my mind. I'm preaching here. Somebody there came. Okay? I don't believe in what you are doing. Here is the land. Here are the documents, the papers. <laughs> I took it, and I put it. And for me to turn back and pray for him, he was gone. Well, I, I mean, I, I think this, this, this is one That's of right. the things that... God has done in my life. I mean, like healing, healing is the children's but I'll be seeing that in crusade with my husband. And so Amen. he didn't, uh, I, I, as a matter of fact, uh, I mean, looking at people, the lame walking, the deaf hearing, the, I mean, it's the children's bread. But yes. for this man mm. <laughs> of a different religion completely, coming to tell me, I don't believe in what you are saying. But I, I love you need a land here. Here are the documents. I have land along the express road. I say thank you very much. We can manage it. Amen. It's like what God did for, it, uh, what's his name? Oral Roberts, when he was trying to build the university. Yes, sir. He said there was a guy, a big businessman who just mm -hmm. came along. He said, I don't like the way you preach. Yes. I don't, you don't like the way you look or what you stand for. But I believe God is in this operation. I have money for you. Yes. <laughs> yes. They might not like you, but they cannot help but bless you. That's it, sir. And I, I'm, I'm, gr I'm eternally grateful to God. And I know the best is yet to come. Amen. I know That's that. what I was going to ask you because uh, I know there are people watching now. Guys that have no mentor, but through watching you now, they will probably say, yes, I think I have to connect with this great woman of God. You know, what's the thrust of this ministry into the future? What, what? You know, looking ahead into the 21st century, all the beyond, what what are you expecting to do? Oh, you know, th th this is this is uh, this is a, a bit uh, much, but I will cut it down uh, in a small share. You know, before now, the churches, the ministry, we just believe in a spiritual aspect, the spiritual life. This is, the, you just believe in God, go to church, preach salvation, say some small prayers, clap your hands, and go. But you know, when I came into this position I'm in, God spoke to me and said, Margaret, the spiritual life is not the only life I ask my people to go into. Go and read the word. I read Genesis chapter 1. And he gave them the power. He said, go, multiply, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, have dominion, rule. And he said, all the world. So I started preaching that it is our duty, our redemptive right 
to go into the world that God has given unto us, the world of business. It is us, the Christians, that should, should, should control business. That's right. You know, when we see Rolls Royce on the street with, uh, an, uh, with uh, a, 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 a man with long pipe in his mouth and he's smoking, we say, ah, this one don't go to hell. It's not so. We are supposed to rule the world of business because our father is a great businessman. The world of business, the world of education. You know, in those early years when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, when we were going to camp meeting from school to school, some people said, no, education was not important anymore. And many people that were in the university left the university and they never finished. But God is now telling us, go to school. Be educated and be in control. When your mind is educated, when your mind is developed, you can raise your head up high and square your shoulder and you cannot be intimidated. I told them. Wow. I want to thank God for your life because we're going to have to do this again. Oh yeah, we have to. I love your style. I know we you come to, to town from time to time. Yes, I do. But we look forward to seeing you again. All thank right. you so much, Ma. You know, that was uh, Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa. You know what? Keep your, get the phone number down, call her. Make sure you attend every minute meeting whenever she comes over. God bless you. Whatever you do, don't touch the dial. See you same time next week. Bye for now.